Yes, yes, people. So today we're going to have a little look quickly, just briefly, at exercise sickness. We've got one newspaper article to briefly read and then two little uh, documentation pieces. So for those of us that, that already know, every time one of these cataclysmic events happen, whether it's 7-7, 9-11, Boston bombings, the... Uh, what was the school shooting? Um, I can't remember. Sandy Hook. Um, any of these things, there's a whole heap of predictive programming involved, and there's usually some kind of drill, training exercise uh, going on either around the same time or the months or a year prior to, to the actual so called real event happening. And this happens almost all the time on these cataclysmic events that change the way that we live our lives, you know, whether it's looking for or being aware of empty bags on tube stations or, you know, not travelling outside of your house as it may be this time. <clears throat> so here we have exercise Cygnus. Cygnus is a Latinized Greek term for dove, which symbolically is a sign of, is a symbol of, of divinity and purity. And we know how these crazy ass people love, love their symbology and their signs. So this is divinity and purity, the symbol of when the exercise is based on people getting really sick from dirty stuff, but whatever. So there we have a massive duality already, but it is also the Cygnus uh, a, a constellation, a star constellation, and it's also known as the Northern Cross, which, you know, talking of the uh, summoning of the Antichrist and stuff that we're we're seeing emerging right about now, it's an interesting title. So there we have it. If we just look, take a look at this quick little Telegraph article, I think it is, and then we'll have a look at these bits of documentation. Now, I'm sure we're going to find out as we read through this, but I'm sure this exercise had taken place back in 2016. Um, and there was further exercises after that as well. But they're trying to paint a picture here of the government or the NHS or whoever's involved with setting up these exercises or a drill, as it is stated there, um, as failing after this. But... My question throughout the whole of this is how could they possibly fail to deliver PPE and these basic basic things that we would expect them to deliver? It's the 21st century and we're in a first world country. It doesn't make any sense. But for me, these so-called failings, again, are orchestrated as part of the, the chaos that they're trying to, to enforce on us. So if you go and look at the legislation and how long it is and the regulations and how, how long that shit is, it was published on February the 10th, those regulations. Now, no one is telling me that they had time to do this drill, draft all of them regulations, and it didn't have time to order any PPE. It's, it's ridiculous. This is the, the, the drought of protective equipment, the chaos that we're seeing is all induced on purpose. So let's get into it. It says, Ministers from across government were seated, ashen-faced, in the Cabinet Office briefing room. On a large flat screen, epidemiologists from Imperial College London were showing a slide which detailed the scale of the epidemic that was enveloping Britain. The first cases of the virus had been confirmed in Southeast Asia two months previously. Southeast Asia, two months previously, is very interesting. Britain reported its first cases, imported from returning travellers a month later. Now there was widespread and sustained domestic transmission and the World Health Organization had declared a global pandemic. Blood clot. So, but it was not the pandemic itself that was causing those gathered in Whitehall to grimace, but the nation's woeful preparation. This is what I'm talking about. The peak of the epidemic had not yet arrived, but local resilience forums, hospitals and mortuaries across the country were already being overrun. There was not enough personal protective equipment Mm. For the nation's doctors and nurses, the NHS was about to fall over due to a shortage of ventilators and critical care beds, which is, you know, they're putting us in a position where we're almost feeling like the NHS should be falling over, but there's no one in the hospitals. It's a very weird, weird duality. Morgues were set to overflow, and it had become terrifyingly evident that the government's emergency messaging was not getting trans traction with the public. 
which again <clears throat> you know we're hearing oh they might have to tighten the measures people aren't listening I don't know fucking anyone that's just outside chilling all the time it's bollocks everyone's fucking imprisoned themselves it was a drill codenamed Exercise Cygnus that took place in October 2016 and involved all major government departments all of them the NHS local authorities across Britain the modelling for the outbreak was prepared by the same team that was cracking the all too real COVID-19 pandemic now I would say you can't write it, but they have and they do all the time. Just for us to see. It's ridiculous. The Sunday Times reveals it showed gaping holes in Britain's Emergency Preparedness, Resilience and Response Plan, EPRR plan is referred to. It's unreal. I mean, what can I even say to that? You know, the modelling for the outbreak was prepared by the same team that is cracking the all too real COVID-19 pandemic now. You couldn't make it up, that's for sure. Unbelievable. So the article continues. The only significant difference between the test drill and the pandemic we now face is that Cygnus was assumed to be the H2N2 influenza virus. So basically just the name is different. While COVID-19 is a coronavirus, both spread rapidly and kill by causing acute respiratory illness. So they both spread and kill in the exact same way, it's just they call it something different. Great. There is one other difference. While the real COVID-19 epidemic is being played out in public, that's a weird way of putting it, the report detailing the findings of the exercise signals have never seen the light of day. A senior former government source with direct involvement in the exercise said that they were deemed too terrifying to be revealed. Others involved cited national security, national security concerns. There has been a reluctance to put Cygnus out in the public domain because, quite frankly, it would terrify people, said the former senior government source yesterday, who they don't name or even say what part of the government he come from. But there we go. <clears throat> it's right to say that the NHS was stretched beyond breaking point by Cygnus, that is. People might say that we have blood on our hands, but the fact is that it's e always easier to manage the last outbreak than the one coming down the track. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. See, the article continues again. Others are more critical. A senior academic directly involved in Cygnus and the current pandemic, so, you know, they just state it's a senior academic. Nowhere do they say who it is or where he's from. But he's involved in Cygnus and the current pandemic, so I guess we should trust him. These exercises are supposed to prepare the government for something like this, but it appears they were, what, they were aware of the problem but didn't do much about it. We've been quite surprised at the lack of coherent planning for a pandemic on this scale. It's basically a lack of attention to what would be needed to prevent a disease like this from come, from overwhelming the system. All the flexibility has been piled away, so it's difficult to react quickly. Nothing is ready to go. Reasons for the report not being published are likely to go beyond Whitehall's paternal view and desire not to frighten the public. So here they're admitting, you know, it's not just about the fear. It is probably more than that. Reasons for the report not being published are likely to go beyond Whitehall's paternal view and a desire not to frighten the public. Telegraph has, walked, has talked to multiple sources with first-hand knowledge of Cygnus, and all say the exercise revealed significant cap, caps, I think I mean gaps, in the NHS's surge capacity. These gaps, which included a shortage of ICU beds and PPE, were revealed at a time of austerity. Jeremy Hunt, the then Health Secretary, and Simon Stevens, Chief Executive for the NHS England, were cutting NHS bed numbers at the time rather than adding capacity. Dame Sally Davies, the chief, then chief medical officer, faced similar financial constraints. There was also cynicism across Whitehall about the epidemiological modelling. The previous chief medical officer, Liam Donaldson, ended his t term under something of a cloud when in 2009 the H1N1, as opposed to the H2N2, which they did the drill on apparently, pandemic, proved a damp squib relative to the initial modelling. I don't even know what the fuck that means. The same, same view is taken in the forecasting of the 2013-2016 West African Ebola outbreak. Whatever the reasons, the report on exercise sickness was buried and its prophetic finding for, hidden from public view. At the meeting of the Public Health England PHE Advisory Board on 26th of two, April 2017, Paul Cosford, the Quango's Director for Health Protection, I don't even know what the fuck Quango is, so the report setting out the learning and recommendations from Cygnus was in the process of being finalised, but it never saw the light of day. 
Telling perhaps NHS England, the body which oversees the running of the NHS was found most wanted in the report, has no mention of the exercise on its website. Its high fidelity government operated search engine returns nothing for the phrase Cygnus, despite a board paper on the exercise being un- unearthed by the Telegraph. So, this is one of the things we're going to look at in a minute is the board paper exercise, or board paper on the exercise. Our preparations for pandemic influenza were exercised on October 2016 with NHS England participating in Exercise Cygnus. The exercise was set seven weeks into a severe pandemic outbreak and challenged the NHS to review its response to an overwhelmed service with reduced staff availability, says the paper, which was drafted for clearance by Matthew Swindles, the then National Director of Operations and Information. So seven weeks is actually what when exercise sickness started it was meant to replicate the start of seven weeks into the pandemic so i think we're literally just going into week four now so we've not entered the stage of sickness yet <clears throat> a video below seven minutes and 14 seconds of the meeting shows the nhs england board considering the paper for just a few minutes with no serious questions being raised This is despite the document making clear, albeit in the obtuse language of Whitehall, that the NHS had been found wanting by the exercise. The NHS's emergency plans were to be revised to incorporate the learning from this exercise and ensure our continued preparedness for future pandemic influenza outbreaks that they were definitely expecting to happen, said Mr Swindle's paper. We are also continuing the challenging work around the management of the surge and escalation decision-making process. The NHS board was then asked to receive assurance that the NHS England and the NHS in England are prepared to respond to an emergency, which it duly accepted without further action. Pressure is already mounting on the NHS leadership. Yesterday, the editor of The Lancet, Richard Horton, called the NHS board to resign in their entirety once the crisis is over. So that's the Telegraph little article about it. That's probably the best article I could find on it, to be honest. And um, we've got two little bits of documentation just to look at now. One from a council, I think it was Lincolnshire, and another one from the NHS. Right, so just before we look at the next little bits of documentation, I thought it'd be important for us to come over here to the HCID status of COVID-19 and as of March 19th, it's important to note the dates here, as of March 19th, 2020, COVID-19 is no longer considered to be a high consequence infectious disease, HCID, in the UK. The Four Nations Public Health HCID group made an interim recommendation in January 2020 to classify COVID-19 as an HCID, so we know from January to March 19th, this was a HCID disease, okay? So this means that when the regulations were drafted, it was considered a HCID. And that is very important for us to recognize. So it is no longer as of March the 19th, okay? This was based on consideration of the UK HCID criteria about the virus and the disease with information available during the early stages of the outbreak. Now that more is known about COVID-19, the public health bodies in the UK have reviewed the most up-to-date information about COVID-19 against the HCID criteria. They have determined that several fe- features have now changed. In particular, more information is available about the mortality rates, low overall, and there is now greater clinical awareness and a specific and sensitive laboratory test the availability of which continues to increase. The Advisory Committee on Dangerous Pathogens, ACDP, is also of the opinion that COVID-19 should no longer be classified as a HCID. Okay? So, this is important for us to note dates here. Cases of COVID-19 are no longer managed by HCID treatment centres only. All healthcare workers managing possible and confirmed cases should follow the updated National Infection and Prevention Guidance for COVID-19 supersedes all previous IPC guidance for COVID-19. Okay, so we know in March this was taken from being a HCID classified disease. And that is, um, that's an important change. We know that the legislation, the regulations were drafted in the middle of this. So from between January and March at the start of February. Right, so here we have an NHS England board paper. 
the title Emergency Preparedness, Resilience and Response, EPRR, the program that we've seen earlier. So the purpose of the paper is to update the board on NHS Emergency Preparedness, Resilience and Response, EPRR, in line with the statutory requirements placed upon the NHS England by the Civil Contingency Act 2004 and the NHS Act 2006, as amended by the Health and Social Care Act 2012. To provide the board of assurance that the NHS England and the NHS in England is prepared to respond to an emergency. Right, so here we have NHS England has responded to several incidents, things, eco die outbreak, Croydon tram crash, blah, blah, blah. Then what we're looking at, NHS England prepared for and participated in exercise sickness, a three-day exercise looking at the impact of a pandemic influenza outbreak and the significant imp- impacts on health delivery and widespread pandemic in the UK would trigger. NHS England has led the EPRR annual assurance check for NHS England and the NHS England in 2016 to 2017 against updated NHS core standards for EPRR. This includes a deep dive into business continuity and fuel disruption preparedness. So, yeah, again, you know, the outline preparation that should put us all at ease. Uh, EPRR is a core function of the NHS and is a statutory requirement of the Civil Contingencies Act 2004. Responding to emergencies is also a key function within the NHS Act 2006 as amended by the Health and Social Care Act 2012. The role of the NHS England is to ensure that the NHS England and the NHS in England is properly prepared to deal with potential disruptive threats to its operation and to take commands of the NHS as required during emergency situations. So here we go with you know, you guys can read that. Um, key activities in 2016-17. So there's a lot of different things here, um, but we're just going to skip down number seven. This is why I skip back to the HCID, um, the HCID classification, because it's important here when referencing 2017-2018. So we have the High Consequence Infectious Disease Program under the leadership of Sir Michael Jacobs has designed new pathways for managing patients with potential viral hemorrhagic fever, which is um, viral fevers that can cause hemorrhaging. It's kind of like a, a, a Ebola is one. I'm not too sure if SARS is one. Ebola is definitely one. Um, the work for 2017-18 focuses on the development of commissioning standards for tendering by specialised commissioning. This includes a whole system approach to early identification isolation, testing and treatment in a range of healthcare settings. This model of operation will allow improved patient management during the diagnosis of suspected HCID patients. So when this outbreak first came about, when this pandemic pandemic first started, this 2017-18 programme would have been extremely, it's just as important as what we're going to look at next, which was the exercise signals. Our preparations for pandemic influenza were exercised in October 2016 with the NHS England participating in exercise signals. The exercise was set seven weeks into a severe pandemic outbreak and challenged the, NH- challenged the NHS to review its response to an overwhelmed service with reduced staff availability. So they were testing what it would be like in a situation where we were already seven weeks into a pandemic and there were already a lot of staff shortages, etc. Um, plans are currently being revised to incorporate the learning from this exercise and ensure our continued preparedness for future pandemic influenza outbreaks. We are also continuing the challenging work around the management of surge and escalation decision-making processes. So, um, yeah, very telling, very interesting. And like I say, uh, the way that they keep, you know, the modus operandi for these sorts of pandemic situations, terrorist situations, situations that have cataclysmic effects in how we manage ourselves in daily life, uh, or even small effects in how we manage ourselves in daily life, you know, the modus operandi is always the same and these drills take place. And being able to read the, uh, some of the details of the drill here is... Um, extremely interesting so here we had that little um right so here's a document from the lincolnshire resilience forum which is a, a group that prepares for emergencies and these sorts of things and documents data and other sorts of things so we, this is directly relating to the uh 
the exercise Cygnus. Influenza pandemic, identified as a tier one risk to the UK, one of nine enduring risks to Lincolnshire. Cabinet officers requested that the Department of Health lead the delivery of a national pandemic influenza exercise. Lincolnshire Local Resilience Forum selected to take part. National aim and objectives aim is to upset, assess the preparedness and response to an influenza out pandemic in the UK. Objectives to exercise organisational pandemic influenza at local and national levels in the United Kingdom. To exercise coordination of messaging to the public. To exercise strategic decision making processes around the management, the wider uh, around managing the wider consequences and cross government issues at both local and national levels during an influenza pandemic, such as excess deaths. To exercise the provision of scientific advice, including sage, including an influenza during an influenza pandemic. So the exercise scope. This is as we get down to the nitty gritty here. Phase one, in the early stages, health focus simulating the DH delivery board. That's on the 14th of May. May 14th, I don't even know why they're referencing May because this was done in October. But phase two, command post exercise. 13th of October. Conducted over three days with phase participation to fit with a national battle rhythm. Very interesting word in here. Conducted over phased participation to fit with a national battle rhythm. SCG exercise on the first two days telephone point of contact for the final exercise this is just I mean this is a document this for the Lincolnshire uh, resilience form so you know it's a it doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense to us but this here here we go the scenario new strain H2N2 first cases in Southeast Asia in June July the 14th 2004 I don't know June July 14 fuck knows uh, CDC identifies the virus as H2N2 and Southeast Asian countries notifies World Health Organization of cases in late July. The first cases in the UK returning from travellers August the 14th. So we can see the month month away there when we get our first cases from returning travellers. It's very interesting how this is all playing out. Cluster of cases from September 14. So, you know, August, September is... is World Health Organization declare a pandemic in September the 14th. UK peak mid-November. First UK wave completed by mid to late January. Visual representat- representation of the possible cause of the pandemic wave for exercise Cygnus. So as you can see, phase two, which is where the red dot is there where the arrow comes out of mid-October 2014, we can see that is where they may have told us the peak is now or even even at the end of September there. If we imagine that's the end of this month or even the end of last month, you can see the, the trajectory there. That is um possible UK peak. The percentage of cases goes up by fives here. So really, five, ten percent. 15%, 20%. So it's like 23% or something at UK peak. Which, you know, that's a, nearly a quarter of all people. But then it subsides just as quickly. World Health Organization pandemic phase. Alert phase pandemic phase and then there's another red line after which doesn't really lead to a phase <laughs> as far as I can see so exercise sickness the participation information flow so this is the maybe the COBRA meeting and the SAGE technology thing uh, NHS Public Health England so we can identify some of these organisations but the workflow I mean I'll leave it here if any of you can make sense of it wicked but I'm not going to do that right now participation overview so we can just see who's involved here we've got pretty much a whole every part of the country all all counties covered really greater manchester merseyside south of yorkshire you can see on the right there um a whole lot of organizations here so this is who was part partaking in very interesting how big an operation this was and that we still haven't really seen any real details from it Geographical spread again. This is from Exercise Cygnus, so you know, screenshot this, cross reference it with 
5G rollouts before this was even even happening. Do your investigating, you know, there's some interesting information we have here. Local strategic objectives. Again, I'm just going to leave this here for a second because this video is getting on a bit. You get the picture for those of you that have made it this far. I'm sure you can pause it and skim read quickly. So exercise signals. Brief the members of the Health Scrutiny Committee for Lincolnshire on exercise signals to explain the exercise design. Opportunity for you to observe the exercise. Key learning result in. So it was a big, big exercise. And that's, that's the last page there. But um, yeah, some very interesting information throughout that exercise, how it spread out, the amount of organisations in there, some of the wording, uh, the trajectory of this graph here, and the timescales. There's a lot of um, interesting information here. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it won't too long. I'll try and make these ones a bit more structured in future, get to the points. But um, yeah, big up, justice. Like, subscribe, all that shit. Till next time. Peace.